There you go. Welcome, everybody. Uh, good. First question. Why I'm not using an ID? I am. I'm so everything starts with I am kind of old, right? I'm almost 30. I started programming early, so I'm not used to IDEs. I practically don't use any IDEs. Personally, I think they are really good tools. PyCharm is a really good tool. I, I find it to be too clumsy. I find it, I don't like to be tied to any platform in particular. I just need a bash or a shell, a terminal and a text editor, you know, any text editor. And I will be fine with that. I personally like Emacs and I personally like also, um, Atom, sorry, Atom or Sublime or any lightweight text editor, but PyCharm, um, Visual Studio, you know, they are adding Python. They've been adding Python lately. They are great tools, just more of a personal opinion. They are, they are great tools. Um, so let's get started. I, I liked the, to get questions so you guys can answer, I'd like post any question you guys have. There's a better way than just using the chat. If you guys look in your screen, every client's gonna be different, but you can look up for a part in your Zoom client that has a Q&A section. That's basically like posting questions and I will get a better notification just then from the chat. I will still read the chat, but it's gonna be a little bit better to receive them over the Q&A. I think also the recording will have those those Q and A's, you know, those questions actually are marked in the final video. So let's get started. Um, so Lou, hey, great to see you. We are gonna use both Python, Python 2 and Python 3. We personally prefer, I personally prefer, and I think I can speak for everybody remoter, we prefer Python 3, it's a, it's a great improvement. But the truth out there is that for any type of shop or, or application you guys want to build or you have to support, you know, or a new shop, you will at some point, Python 2 is still a reality. It's still something that it's used and popular out there. So we need you guys to show you both, both things. So what I was doing before, for example, I, I needed a feature that was only available in Python 3, so I had to switch every new concept that we, that we explore that needs that there is if for that particular concert there are differences between the two versions we will bring the, the 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 differences and we will discuss them all together we're going to analyze sometimes it's a matter of personal taste um so yeah it's we will cover both because they are they're required you know at some point you will run across a, a Python 2 code base or a Python 3 code base. And more importantly, if you want to write your own code, I mean, if with a few tiny additions, you can make it both Python 2 and Python 3 compatible, that's great. It's not that hard. And the other question that I have here, the advanced training does cover Lambda functions. Lambda are actually functions. And you will also see how to mimic methods with lambdas. So yep, we will cover them. All right, so to get started, I will, I will do kind of the same thing we do in our classes. So I will start sharing my screen. I'm gonna present myself first. My name is Santiago, I'm one of the instructors at remoter.com. Um, we have a few other mentors, and other instructors, so you guys can, you will get to meet them, pretty much all of them. We have people from everybody. Um, I am currently based in Chile. I have been here for like two months, three months, I'm probably moving. Um, I like to, to work remotely and try to get to know as many countries as possible. Uh, we have people from Canada, from the United States, from Sweden. Um, we have people from every, for every, from every possible place. So. Um, you guys will get to know them all. Again, I'm gonna start just sharing my screen as we do in our regular classes. And again, you guys can just ask us whatever you need, whatever you, any questions you guys might have. 
Um, so here it says May, but it's actually the new one. I was updating it a few minutes ago. So what is our vision, right? Why are we doing the whole thing? There are a few things that I can cover right now and kind of just, you know, take them out of the road. And there are a few things first. Programming is really important. That's why you guys are here. I don't need to go over details about that. We don't do anything special. We don't do anything magic, you know? What we do is we just give you um, a complete schedule with everything prepared, and we just give you a really efficient model, all right? Um, you will be coding a lot, so you will have a lot of practice, and we want you to feel this sense of accountability. You know, you will have to turn projects in, you'll have to submit pull requests, you will have to complete individual homework, and it's gonna be, like you will feel it kind of going back to school, but it's gonna be completely different in terms of, of the level of the discussion. Usually when we have a class, it's not, that, I mean, of course we're gonna explain you things. We will try to transmit to you new concepts, but it's gonna be a, a really adult conversation, you know, and that's what we like. We really like questions, we like interactions. Um, so it's just that, again, we don't do anything Magical. I don't want you guys to, to think that any course out there is going to do anything magical for you. Even if you don't take our courses, you will be the ones putting the hard work. And we always do the same comparison. It's programming is pretty much the same thing, or, or it's really, I mean, it's not the same thing, but um, it feels or it has the same motive and you need the same, the same dedication as sports, you know? And there is a great example here. You guys have probably started many online courses you have never finished. Or even if you finish them, you still have like a void feeling inside. That's an analogy with that, with sports, something we can see all the time. And of course, you're gonna say, of course, what you say, right? What happens if you just sit to watch the NBA, you know, or, or the NFL or a football match, you know? Will you be better at that sport? I mean, if you, if you watch two hours of NBA every day, what happens when you go to the court? Will you be a good basketball player? You probably won't. You will know the players, so you will be able to speak about that, you know? I don't know if you have ever gone to any meetup, you know, like technological meetup, and you have people speaking, and they have never coded anything, and they know every fancy tool, every fancy technology out there. All right, it's gonna be the same thing. So you will, you will know the players, you will know a few moves maybe, but when you want to put them in practice, you will, you will not be able to do so. So it's the same thing. It's the same comparison. We will not do anything special. We will give you the best framework that we can think of for you guys to practice. So you will focus only on practicing. You will not be wasting any time with anything else. The concepts you need to read, here they are. The practice thing you need to do is these projects. It starts right here, has clear boundaries, you know, so you, you know where you have to start, you know where you have to end, and that's it. And if you have any question, you just reach out to a mentor, you know, a real person, a real human being that can tell you, like, why are you doing these? And, you know, give you, um, give you examples, rephrase explanation, you know, because sometimes you need to see or to take a look at the same issue from a different standpoint. So just reach out to a real human being. And instead of being two hours Googling, you know, just get that um, issue you know, resolved in just 20 minutes or 10 minutes. And, and on top of that, you will learn some, you will learn more. You know, the mentoring sessions we have, they're really rich. Because again, there is an open conversation. You know, the, there are, if, if you have, we do have a platform where you guys will have to submit your solution for assignment, for your assignments. You know, there will be coding challenges, more coding challenges. And you will have to submit your, your solution for that, which is great. We, we use it, but, but it's not everything because the same problem can have different solutions. The same problem. I mean, here you guys might read my code and you will find like, why are you doing this? You know, I can find new things. I can read your code and I can provide insights, you know, like, 
hey, that type of style is not really re recommended, you know? And it's a big deal because the, your solution will work, but you will try to go get a shop. And, and if you have an experienced Python program in reading your code, he or she will immediately know that you're, you're just getting started because your style is bad, you know? In Python, we care a lot about style, a lot about style. And so, so those tiny things, again, your solution might work perfectly, but it can be inefficient, or you can be wasting resources, or you might be creating too many variables, or you could have solved it with, hey, you have 10 lines of code right here. You know, there is a library. You can just do import magic, and it will take care for you of that. So um, that's like the first thing we wanna, we wanna clear out of the row right now. It's like, we will not do anything special. We'll just give you carefully thought framework and you guys will be the ones putting the hard work. You will be the ones assisting to classes. You will be the one practicing, submitting code, writing code, writing actual code. Think about it like a sports bootcamp. You get up in the morning, we talk for 20 minutes about basketball and then you have to go and play four hours, you know, and you will be coding much of your time. If you guys have checked our website, we ask you to have at least 20, of, 20 hours per week available. From those 20 hours, you have just four hours of class per week. So you can, you can do the math, you know, how much, the, and, and you will be working 20 hours per week. So the rest is going to be coding, a lot of practice, a lot of coding, all right? So that's what we, what we try to do here. Ashenda, really quickly. Um, maybe I'm, I'm starting to, to speak, you know, what I feel and, uh, you guys might have like more basic questions. You guys, for both our programs, um, you guys will have like two classes per week, right? So for example, the intro to Python course is going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays starts next week. You have two classes per week, 6 PM Pacific. You got to be on time. We count your attendance. We need you there. If you cannot make it, we will ask you to read, to, sorry, to watch the recording of the class and you still have to submit your individual assignments and you still have to submit your projects. And we will ask you to join a mentor session, you know, to discuss things from the class. We don't want you to lag, you know, it's just want you to keep making progress. It's just six weeks. It's a six week program to the Intro to Python one. It's a six week program, the Advanced Python course, and you guys will be ready for for a shop after those 12 weeks i guarantee you we have all our students are getting shops right now we are actually we're really bad uh, it's 6 p.m P pst pacific time um we are really bad tracking our students metrics we're trying to improve that and if you guys have uh, ideas that'd be great but um we speak to them all the time and you guys can you will be really solid in terms of of, of experience so to, to move to make that that step ahead uh, so again then it's going to be 6 p.m pacific it's um 9 p.m right um eastern so eastern is a little bit late usually what happens is pacific people have a few more hours those that want to do it to keep working after the class people on eastern on eastern time will probably just go to bed uh, um, of course, if you are more like a night all you can just stay and keep working. It's up to you. There are mentors all the time, so you can just do it whenever you want. Um, we will have like a group practicing, practice groups, you know, at, at different times where you guys can meet to work with, um, with uh, the projects we will assign you so you don't feel lonely, you know, there, aside from the mentor, because of course it's, it's fine to just jump to a session and talk to a mentor. But um, it, we will give you the time to, to talk, like to, to give you guys a, a, a more human um, context. Uh, so, so there is one, whoa, that's like, don't worry. So something else that I want to cover. We also have um, European people taking these courses. And it's going to be really late, as soon as has right there. It's going to be 1.13 in his case. But it's super simple. You guys will just watch the recording and we have like an extra separate European class, European time zone, I mean, right? Like um, we have like part of Africa, part of, of Asia and part of Europe, you know? 
It's gonna be around, I think it's 6 p.m. Spain time, you know, European times and Africa and Asia, Asia time, confuse me, sorry. But um, it's gonna be around that time. So you guys from Europe, you can just still showing. Uh, and Japan, yeah, Japan's gonna be late. Um, but well, Japan is gonna be right like um, in the morning, isn't it? Like 6 p.m. Pacific's gonna be in the morning for Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, the um, the Pacific, the intro to Python course is Tuesdays and Thursdays. So again, we have. I think we have cleared the road here. You guys will be doing the hard work. I'm sorry. That's. I, maybe you don't want to hear that. Maybe you want to hear this magical program. You will sit. You will learn like with the matrix, you know, wiring something, it's not gonna happen. You will have to code, but we guarantee you just six weeks for each project, you will be coding. You will be really comfortable with coding. So you have to just sit and practice about um, everything. Um, so shames, yeah, we will probably have that time change. It's not gonna be a change. We wanna add like two parallel batches, like, um, uh, something running on on 7 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Oh, mo Monday and Wednesday, you say? All right, so we can talk about that later. I think you're in Slack, right? So we can just. Oh, the American time will change in November. Um, so you we usually follow the American standard time, but again, in November, we're gonna make changes so we can have parallel courses. So hopefully there will be pretty much, there will be better coverage for different times. All right, so again, two classes per week, class total time is gonna be about four hours. You guys will have a lot of practice, guided with mentors, you know, and different projects to work with, quizzes, et cetera, et cetera, sorry. Um, so yeah, shames again, we, we will probably have um, parallel batches. So I think it's gonna be pretty much cover, but we, we still will follow the American change. Um, so I think I have already covered pretty much all of this. Um, what we do, you guys will be working a lot and practicing a lot. All right, so the two different like three different, we are postponing Django until November. The two starting in October are Introduction to Python and Advanced Python. And they are meant to be just follow one after the other, which is split it because we know there are some, some students will prefer to just stick with one of them. Like there will be advanced students will just fall in the advanced one. There will be students that just want to do intro. And basically, like really quickly, two curriculums, Intro to Python, it's going to be um, a really good start point. You know, if you are just starting with programming, we will cover a lot of concepts. We want to stick with concepts. Of course, we use Python, so you guys will be using Python, but we will not just tell you, write a Python list. We're gonna tell you about the concept of collections, I'm gonna tell you about characteristics of lists, for example, like, I don't know, they're gonna be unordered, mutable data structures. So you, hopefully you can just transition to any other programming language later, you know, after the course, and you will just, you will find yourselves just <clears throat> like transferring that knowledge into different courses and uh, different programming languages, sorry. So again, the Intro to Python, we will give you a lot of cons, especially for people that maybe you don't have a computer science background, so, I don't know, we're gonna talk about, um, of course, or we have a practical foundation, so everything is going to be long, lean, is leaning towards you guys working real life scenarios, you know, either getting a real life job or just coding your own tools, you know, automating your own things um, with a practical standpoint, but we will mer merge that or mix that with concepts. Again, we will talk from, I don't know, from um, the complexity of an algorithm or, or, or an efficiency of a, of a data structure, you know, to, to, I don't know, scope of functions. You, you guys 
we'll find a lot of concepts. And again, hopefully they will be transferred to, to all other programming languages if you ever need to switch. And also they will fill the gaps that you have if you don't have like a more formal computer science education. Because moving forward, you know, when you want to make that X, like you want to take that, that step forward in your career, it's important to know the concepts and important to know the computer science concepts. The advanced course, it will deal with many individual, like we can, it's going to be a lot more atomic in terms of concepts. But in parallel, like you guys will be, you know, you will learn about iterators, generators, context managers, I don't know, inheritance, multiple inheritance, um, I don't know, from parsing a five or 8,000 line CSV file and building an iterator with it to building a real like REST API using Flask. But it is focused more in practice. You guys will do a ton of practice. Again, you will learn new things, similar to what I say with the intro one, but the focus here is gonna be in practice. You guys will be practicing a lot, building many projects, projects that are gonna be challenging. Projects, some projects, projects will require you to do some research, you know, on your own, and that's fine. Some projects will be kind of broken and you will have to find where it's broken. It's real life. We're taking you in a contained, controlled environment. We're taking you closer to a real life situation, you know, slowly making that, that progression. So again, after the advanced course, you can just start working with your real projects, just gonna feel uh, natural. Um, so we have, it's just, I think we're just bragging with these. You guys don't care about that, this, that much. We had a many students, you know, we have again, many mentors from many different countries, different time zones, different backgrounds. And we also, oh, this kind of outdated. I should have updated that, but um, you guys can find all the reviews we have, have a pretty good score. We try to, what we try to do is just keep our students happy, you know, it's just like help you as much as we can. Um, so community, it's also really important for us. You guys will start jumping to us, to our Slack channel. And uh, also what I told you about like these peer groups where you can just sit with a mentor and keep working with, with him or her, you know, and in a group environment. Maybe you're just in a hangout, you know, with your microphone muted, your camera off, just coding, you know, doing your own thing, coding, but uh, I don't know, someone might have a question, bring it up to the group, everyone can, can start discussing it together. So it's, it's a great thing to have. Um, once again, you guys have like access to unlimited mentors, right? It's not something like we're gonna cap you on two hours per month or two hours per week. You guys can, you have a question. We actually encourage you, have a question, please reach out a mentor. We have like a 10, 15 minutes rule. If you try to figure out on your own, that's good. Give it, give it some, again, five, 10 minutes, depends on the stage. But if you can't solve it, or even if you solve it, you know, you had an issue, you Google it, you found a solution, still reach for the mentor and, and check your solution with him or her, you know, tell them what you have done, Ask them for, for, for their like um, recommendation and opinions onto your code. What about the solution that you found? Hey, I Googled these, I reached, I got to Stack Overflow, this was the solution, what do you think, you know? So, so try to run your solutions with a human being. And we also have a free course for those of you that don't feel that comfortable with programming right now. So you just have to go to, Oh, to um, free remoter.com slash free, just slash free is gonna redirect you. And the next one, we don't have like the clear start that started of, or the next, of the next one, but it's I think it's gonna be the second week of October. So it's gonna be pretty soon. So you guys should sign up and we will email you when it's published. And that is pretty much it for today. I think we have covered everything. Those of you that wanted a magical solution, I'm sorry. You guys will be working a lot and putting a lot of time coding. Any questions you guys have, I'm more than happy to answer.
the the Eric the Eric the um, the intro one is for beginners. Yes, it is for beginners. Um, the free course is a little bit more like it's a lot slower. Like the free course, like this is a variable, this is memory, you know. So it's a lot more um, slow. So yeah, the intro one is you guys will have a lot of support. Um, yeah, so we will have the Django one running on November probably. So Amy, yes, yes, Amy, yeah, of course. Uh, you guys will be working in groups for the projects. We will pair, like we will pair you based on time zone, of course, but also in like, um, you will get to, to meet everybody, you know, so you, you will, this is a good thing too. I mean, you guys will, um, soon go, sorry, it's going to be November, the jungle one. Um, so Amy, sorry, going back. The, you will be sharing the same class six weeks with the same group of people. So you will know them, you know, you will get to know them. You guys will be discussing things out of class, out of, out of curriculum. So yeah, you will be doing a lot of pair programming and coding with people we will actually ask you to review other people's project you know or code that's going to be also um so the free course is just four weeks um four and, and four weeks and there's just one class per week and it has a lot more practice like individual practice it's for us so we when we decided this kind of i'm kind of sidetracking here but um when we started our intro to Python course started really basic and we found that that, it, that was a mistake because you guys need your own, like my, the, your own process to mature thing, you know, to, to help them grow internally. So that's why there is just one class per week. It's a condensed class and you guys have a lot of practice to do that. So it's like hammering the same concepts throughout the entire week until the next class. So it's just four weeks um, and it's intended to just get, get you ready for, for the other. Um, so Bernice, you don't kind of need that much of practice to be honest in terms of um, shopping to the advanced course, but still you can take a look at the projects of the advanced course. I can share them with you in Slack. Hello, Robert. You're welcome. Um, so, Shames, uh, pretty much nothing because uh, for the course you guys are taking you will not need that much of practice. Um, I can, I will still email you uh, tomorrow or on, on Thursday with all the details, like to get started, familiarized with the platform and all that. But you, like you, you're completely safe. Like we, we don't want you guys to start working before class because we know you might have just scheduled something like for the class starting. So it's not a hard requirement to start doing something on your own. Still, if you want to get started with something, um, just ping me and we can, we can talk any day, you know. Uh, Gonzalo, great question. Yes, so the, this course, it's, to, it's leaning towards just Python, pure Python. This is going to be useful for every project. So let me show you a project that we have um, by the way, all the content we use is open source and free. So even if you guys are not taking the course, you can still access it. So let me go to a nice one, simple one. This is from the advanced one. And it's, for example, processing huge amounts of data. In this case, it's uh, 8,000 lines long. Um, uh, there you go. It's 8,000 lines 
almost 9,000 lines. So this is an example of a project of the advanced one. You guys will be parsing these data structures and building um, on iterators, working with iterators. And it's a more advanced concept, but um, it's, it's really important for data processing in general. Eric, no, the class is audio and video. It's like a real video conference. So you guys will just speak up, you know, it's like everybody, you can just unmute yourself, share your screen. You know, you're working with a piece of code. You can just share your screen and it's, it's a real class. Like, sorry, I, I should have covered that at the beginning of this imposition, but it's going to be, it's a, it's a traditional video conference meeting. David, no, uh, actually that's something we cover and you guys, we're going to show you how to interact. So something also forgot about this. I should include these in the, in the slides. Thank you guys. Something we try to do also is not just making you focus on Python, just Python, because to be honest, you can just go get a book. You will learn Python. Um, by the way, I'm answering David's question. What we will try to give you are all like these, these environment, you know, these ecosystem related to Python, but it's really important in order to do professional development. You know, if you're just getting started with, with programming, having something running in, in an online tool, that's fine. Code Academy like, it's fine. But in the, the real world, that's not how it works. There will be many tools surrounding the language that are important to, to to learn and we start from that with that from day one so for example something as simple as test driven development you guys will be doing testing from the first day you know it's like super important so the intro course we cover all the github part we cover how to install tools we cover how to create virtual environments we will ask you to run your your tools in a cloud ID that we use that has an interface like a Linux shell. So you will end up learning Linux too. So of course, again, everything is going to be covered. Like we're going to go slow in terms of that. So you guys can pick it up. It's not that hard to be honest, it's just managing tools, but we will take care of that. Um, so what if face, what time of projects do you do on the Django course? Um, yes, we're, so we are not taking the, the, the Django course. We're not starting the Django course. These, no, this in this batch in, in October, we have stopped for a while because we're updating everything to Django 1.11. And you guys, if you search for WDV, the web development with Django was our codename, it will find many projects here. So I don't know from, um, this is this is a nice one again these are, these are update outdated but still you can see kind of what we do there's a really complex sql schema takila it's the name it was built by the mysql people it's uh like a video renting system like blockbuster but what, what that was called and it's a really complex system and let me see if we have yeah like this is these are all the it's actually migrated to Postgres, but these are the like the structures of the table. So this is an example of a Django project. We will ask you to make advanced SQL queries, of course, using the Django ORM to to get data from here. You guys will be building APIs. I don't know. You guys will be interfacing with MongoDB, many different things. Um. So oh, sorry, that was one face question. So Robert, I often find myself having trouble with amazing code. Will you guys be giving credit feedback? Um, yeah, so we talk a lot about that. You know, um, importantly, it's uh, what I told you. Something that changes from the intro to Python class to the advanced class is that the advanced class usually it's an advanced class. You guys will take the conversation up. You know, you guys will be speaking or you have knowledge it's like it's it's not that much of a relationship of teacher student but we're peers you might know something that i'm not familiar with so here's like bringing it up to the conversation um sharing code you know when you guys submit your pull requests we will make them review etc so yeah completely 
Um, how many students, Matt, great question, around 20, 25, that's usually our sweet spot. Um, less than 20, it's boring. More than 30, it's kind of difficult to manage. Still doable, completely doable. Um, but around 20, 25. Uh, then, what does the intro advanced Python course offer for career services and people searching for shops? Then, great question. We're starting with that. As I told you guys at the beginning, something we do really bad is keeping track of, of our students' careers. So we are starting with that like full time. We're, we're dedicating to, to that and we will cover interview questions. Um, or actually, sorry, interview training is not about questions. Questions, just questions gonna be communication in general um, we will be we are so this of course we're just getting it started again but um we are having um, person reviewing emails we will ask you to write emails and we will like from grammar checking to the way you communicate uh, that's everything related to interviews of course the actual interview with coding which is what we care um, and we have after the course is finished, we are gonna build an optional um, part if you want that it's gonna be like building your own showcase project. So in programming, the most important thing you can do if you wanna get a shop is build something cool, build something, you know, point me to this URL, I built these, or, or get me a, a phone and I see your application. And, and it, what, it, what does it, what is this thing doing? And you will tell me, I don't know, it fetches Twitter's, tweets, sorry, and compares them to Reddit posts and merge everything together, talking about, I don't know, uh, these conflict that we have, I don't know, an example. And seeing something that you have built, you know, showing, showing me your, your GitHub profile with many lines of code written, that's the most important thing we can do in terms of shop uh, help. So that's gonna be a big important part too. You will be working your own project. You will decide it. Um, we will give you guidelines about the scope of the project. We don't want you to, to buy two <laughs> things you cannot be able, you will not be able to, to finish. Um, we will give you a sort of line of guidelines. We will of course guide you in terms of what to do, what technology to choose, how to present it, and then we will support you so you can get it done, get it built. But it's, it has to be a really polished project from documentation to a nice, beautiful readme to a real URL, you know, sitting somewhere. It's either an application, something that I can install, something that's real, not just half-baked code sitting in GitHub. Has to be running tests, continuous integration, everything. So we are, we're, aiming um, all our efforts towards career services in general. Of course, that, of course, all the help we can provide, it's important for us too. Um, yes, so Sung so is asking about deployments in the Django one. Yeah, we talk about um, custom kind of manual deployments, like just spinning a virtual server installing nginx all the tools and we also cover the heroku part so if you want to get something really quickly built you can just use heroku with a few commands we cover both of them um and we will also use aws amazon web services so you guys can also check that um david i do not know but if you can email me, I will get you in touch. We have a partnership with Operation Code. And I will email you with Conrad. Ops code, Operation Code. And these folks are really cool. And, and they will surely have a good answer for you. And even you can apply for a scholarship with Operation Code. Um, so sorry about it. I do not know but it's gonna help me too. So just email me, you know, put it, uh, my email address on the chat. There you go. 
Amy, great question. Usually two. You know, it's the sweet spot. It's just three people. It's fine for some projects, but usually it's just two. Um, so we don't use DigitalOcean because exactly, they have one click droplets for Django. They have things pretty much built. If I show you the, the raw thing, like the most difficult raw thing, then for you transitioning to DigitalOcean, for example, it's simple. So we try to show you like, it's, again, it's like the foundation. Then you can just switch to DigitalOcean or, or I don't know, any other service that you guys want. We do show Heroku because it's kind of, diff it's, it's like a different beast in terms of deployment and, and like just adding processes and services, you know, add-ons, how they call them. And it's a nice, a nice tool, you know, for your tool build, and it's simple to work with. So that's why we we also choose Heroku. Um, but yeah, AWS. We show AWS the EC2 part, Elastic Computing Cloud or Elastic Computer Services EC2. That because it feels like it's just a traditional server. Like if you get an old machine and you connect, you plug it. In your in your room and you set your own server it feels like that but also because we will try to show you the real connections to some nice aws services out there and you guys will see how simple it is um we have a few projects uh let me show you so check this out for example it's not using aws actually it's using the ibm watson interface that it's just a command line tool that will translate like will transform speech to text and you guys will see how simple it is with a service like like the service from watson and you guys will be seeing like tools like this today computing cloud computing you know gives you like these advantages a few lines of code and you have something crazy running so yeah All right, guys, so we're gonna get started with our action classes in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, actually. Um, Dan, um, so great question. Great question. Our courses will give you in just Three months, you will be really good at programming. Seriously, no entry level. You will, you will be really good and proficient with programming. So we'll, we can take that out of your road. Like we can help you with that. Um, machine learning and artificial intelligence in general, it does have a big mathematical background. So you will need math for that. I honestly believe that you can also get that from other online courses. But as you guys know, getting to online courses is hard. You need a lot of dedication. Um, so my answer for this, it strongly depends on you. It's perfectly possible without going back to school. There, from, so I'm actually working with data science. We're actually building our data science curriculum. And to be honest, I. I do have a degree, a systems engineering degree, like a formal, more traditional education. But to be honest, I, I already covered all the math part like six years ago. So I didn't remember about everything about linear algebra. I had an idea, but uh, of course, but I didn't remember anything. And I just took Khan Academy. Khan Academy, it's great with linear algebra. And, and still, the, there are many resources you can, you can use for, for that. But again, of course, it depends on you. So sorry, I'm taking this question back to you here. It's, it depends on you. Maybe it's easier if you do have access to school, you can afford that, you know, it's just one year. I don't know how, how that particular school that you're thinking works. Relating to people, you know, talking to people, that, that'll be amazing. You know, going back to school, it does, it does sound challenging and like a step back, but I think it's a step forward, you know, like, getting to know every other all, all their folks 
um, like what we do right here, you know? So I think it's perfectly doable without going back to school. Um, but there are mathematical concepts required for machine learning. They are not that difficult. Seriously, they are not that difficult. I don't know if you guys know about PyTorch. It's actually working on top of, um, then maybe you know it already. It works on top of the uh, TensorFlow architecture of Google. What, where is it? I have too many windows open. Um, and, and it has many of the mathematical models already implemented. So you don't need to implement them, but you will need to understand them. You know, you can just copy paste code and get something running. Like, I don't know, uh, we're actually working on a few projects like um, identifying images, you know. You can copy paste code and get it done. But the truth is that if you want to truly build and understand things, you need some mathematical background. Again, not that much of mathematical background. You have to sit and build them because they're already written and you need to understand how they work and when to use which one of them. Um, the intro and advanced course, and Dan's question again, prepares you for to be a good programmer. Front end, back end, um, we have, for example, we don't have a JavaScript trunk right now. We don't have it, but we have many people and students, they just want to do front end and they have taken our courses to be really good at programming in general. And then now they can transition to JavaScript easily with anything else later and, and learn it on their own. So our courses will be, make you a really good programmer, like the base for any type of development from automating your own lights in your home to web development to data science they're fundamental concepts how to open a file and read and read something from a file and write to another file and dealing with utf8 or ascii characters those things are fundamental to programming those are applied to web development data science automation anything you guys can think of so that's our focus um programming basic you guys will see that the advanced course um, oh yeah, <laughs> I should. Uh, so the <laughs> Jason, I didn't know you were here, man. So Jason is actually a mentor and is keeping track of my time. Um, I should open this lock. All right. So I don't know what I was saying. Oh yeah. That's finally I'm wrapping it up. The advanced course finishes with web development last week because we think that Knowing how to code your own website, your own API, it's something that everybody should know. Even if you do data science, if, if you do data science especially because you will want to publish your results, you know, you have, you have found really cool with data, just sitting in your computer, it's no fun. So you will want to publish that with an API, with a website. Any type of development you do, it's knowing the foundation of the web, it's important. So that's why we have just one week out of the six weeks that works with uh, web development. But yeah, it's our courses focuses on making you a good programmer. All right, everybody, I have just posted the, um, my email address in the chat. I already answered Amy's question, yeah. Let us know if you have any questions. Hope to see you all starting October. And we will email you surprises later, especially in this recording, all right? Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. And see you all in October, hopefully. Still, if you guys don't take our courses, hopefully you can pick up programming and keep working. Um, Shames, by the way, ping me if you have questions about if you want to get started with something before class. We can meet tomorrow if you want. I'm available. All right, guys. See you all. Have a great night or morning for some of you. Goodbye.